Marvel Comics are making major changes to Frank Castle. It looks like they're taking the character of Punisher in a vastly new direction. Now, I think a lot of people probably saw this coming. There was a lot of outrage, a lot of you know criticism of Marvel and the Punisher logo, uh, specifically during the, the recent riots that were going across America. We, we know Punisher was supposed to have a series, uh, Punisher versus Barracuda, from Ed Brisson. I think it was supposed to come out two years ago. It appears it's been uh, shelved indefinitely. We haven't seen really anything from the Punisher since. But we do know in March 2022, we are going to get the first uh, you know, new series of Punisher in quite some time. And it's going to be a vastly different take. I'm going to have all the details right here on the channel. If you're a fan of comic news, uh, reviews, you know, opinions about comic books, thinking critical is likely the, the channel for you. I'm your host, Wes. Definitely subscribe if you haven't and hit the bell for notifications. So I think this was inevitable. I think a lot of people saw this coming. It definitely feels like Marvel are caving in once again to to uh, the Twitter mob or the, the social media mobs. They got a lot of criticism, a lot of feedback, and it definitely... It definitely made me wonder, and I'm sure a lot of the Punisher fans or Marvel fans out there were wondering the same thing. What are they going to do with the character? It doesn't feel like it would be in Marvel's modus operandi to just ignore it and move forward with the character with whatever plans they had. It feels like they're very reactive, especially to anything that they feel uh, you know could, could bring them some type of negative uh, outlook. I personally don't see how this affects Marvel themselves, but obviously they did. So we are getting a new Punisher. It is still Frank Castle, but it's got a, he's going to have a whole new logo. He's going to have, you know, he's he's going to be armed with swords now. He's not really going to have guns, gun violence, and they're going to be going in a vastly new direction with the character. Marvel Comics has a public perception issue. From a lot of their customers, and I'm one of them, I'll be quite frank with you, that they are far too willing to acquiesce to the mob for whatever reason. Whenever the, the mob shows up, we know that uh, not, well, I guess it was a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago now, that uh, there was going to be a Blade series. It was going to be Blade's daughter. It's going to be written by Tim Seeley. And very small amount of public outcry essentially got that series canceled because Tim Seeley is a white creator, and they said that was unfair for Tim Silly to write, uh, you know, Blade's daughter who would presumably be a black character. You know, that, that wouldn't be the right thing to do. And they just, they, they came to the series, it never ended up coming out. So they have a history of doing this, and it's gone over several, you know, regimes, you know, from the Axel Alonso regime or down to the C.B. Cebulski regime. Certainly it doesn't feel like Marvel have grown a backbone with C.B. Cebulski. And it appears, and we don't know yet because we haven't seen the series, that they have once again acquiesced to to the mob, which I don't think is going to help their their perception issue. I don't think it's going to help them with Punisher fans, and I don't think it's just going to help with uh, Marvel Comics readers for the most part. They're not going to appreciate the changes that are being put forward with the character. That's just my speculation. Obviously, only time will tell. We do know that the Punisher creator Jerry Conway himself has recently recently spoken out, specifically while those uh the the, the George Floyd riots were going on against the Punisher logo because you do see a lot of, of pro-police sentiment with that logo on. And he, I guess he wasn't very appreciative of that. And he wanted to see, you know, the Punisher to go away. And I think that probably would have been the right choice if they're really upset with the character and it offends them having this character and this logo associated with them. Just don't use the character. There's nothing out there that says Marvel has to produce a Punisher comic or include him in any of their crossovers or whatever. But, you know, they're still a business. They still want to make money. So they're trying to, you know, play in that gray area where they're acquiescing to the mob. We'll, we'll take his guns away. We'll give him a new logo, one that's not associated with the things that the people that we don't like, apparently police and pro-police, uh, you know, supporters. We'll take those things away from the character. But we still want to publish him because, you know, He's a money-making character. He's not Spider-Man. He's probably the equivalent of a, I don't know, a Daredevil, maybe a step below Daredevil. It it never works out in any business's favor to, to kind of give in to the mob and, and acquiesce and, and, and make wholesale changes based on the reaction, quite frankly, of a large amount of people who don't read comic books. These aren't your customers. Why are you making changes that affect your customers? I've never understood that. I don't know. Would they... 
you know, obviously Batman's a different character, but similar, an, an anti-hero. He doesn't use guns. He certainly doesn't kill people. I don't think DC Comics would ever do away with the Bat logo if they just, they deemed it, you know, uh, problematic. I and mean, they would just kind of ignore it, even though I, I think DC Comics has their own issues. But Marvel, they're just all too willing to give in to these, these uh, public outrages that really, for the most part, aren't coming from their from their uh, from their customers. I also have some issues with the creative team. The new writer is going to be Jason Aaron. He certainly has a history with the Punisher, and this is going to be a thirteen issue, I believe, a prestige uh, series. Jason Aaron in the past has done Punisher Max. Jason Aaron is a very cold writer at Marvel Marvel Comics right now. He hasn't done anything good in quite some time. Go back and read um, Heroes Reborn. It's a pretty average story, and people say that's the best thing Jason Aaron's done in years. So that tells you all, all that you need to know about Jason Aaron. But this is what he had to say about the character, and you can get some hints on where they're going to take the character potentially with this series. After writing The Punisher for over the years, I've always been fascinated by the character of Frank Castle, what moments made him The Punisher, even before that fateful day in the park, and how far will he go to win that war that has consumed his life? Spoiler, as far as it damn well takes. That's the first part of the quote. One of the problems with this is, and apparently they're going to be um, looking into his past, this has all been explored before by a much better writer that's actually much more associated with the character Gar Garth Ennis. If you go read his Punisher Max series, the seeds are all planted during this time of Vietnam. So this isn't new ground. It's just going to be Jason Aaron changing things. You know, to placate the mob. Not surprising because, I, quite frankly, I don't think Jason Aaron has a spine. And this is the, the next quote, and this one is much more important to the changes that they're making. This story is is uh, des is this story is the destined next step. Man, learn how to speak, Jason Aaron. This story is the destined next step in the dark and tragic evolution of Frank Castle from troubled kid to heroic soldier to revenge-driven vigilante to the duly anointed, listen to this, king of killers. Believe me when I say I am as excited about this story as anything I've ever written for Marvel. It feels like, you know, he's going to be working with the Hand, and specifically he's going to be working with the the leader of the Hand, a character called the Beast. He's going to be, it appears to be like, I don't know if he's his cell sword. I don't think he's a mercenary for him, but he's going to be, you know, working specifically for him and be one of his blades. And they're calling him the king of killers right now. That certainly has a connotation to it that, you know, he's a murderer. That certainly takes away the anti-hero, which is what they've mostly sold Punisher as oh, over the years. That kind of takes that edge off him. And it sounds like a full-fledged villain to me. Now, Punisher is always, I don't even know if he's always living in a gray area. There's times, sometimes where he's definitely went over the line, whether you agreed with like who he was uh, going after or not, he would definitely go way too far. Announcing that he is the king of the killers and working for the hand and this character, the beast, feels like they're just saying, you know what? The Punisher is a villain. There's another issue with this comic book, and it's with the artist. I won't get as in-depth in on this as I have the rest, but the artists that they have are Jesus Saez and Paul's, Paul Azateca. These are the absolute wrong artists for Punisher. Punisher is a very gritty character. Even this newer version sounds like he might be more gritty because it sounds like he's a villain. Jesus Saez is one of the cleaner artists that you're going to see. He's he's not exactly Michael Yannon, but he's actually kind of close as far as the cleanliness, this the way the 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 aesthetic of the art. Paul Azateca, not quite as clean as, as Jesus Saez, was actually pretty close. I think they're making a very it's not a bull traded choice. I think it's a, a pretty safe one, and I don't think it's going to work for the character at all. They do not fit a, a character as, as as gritty as the Punisher. So I think they've made a severe, uh, a, a severely poor choice as far as artistic uh, artistic choices, along with Jason Aaron, who's probably among the big name writers at Marvel. Is there anyone colder than Jason Aaron? So this thing has a lot, and I do mean a lot, going against it. The perception, whether that's true or not, that Marvel has acquiesced to the mob, changing the logo, which is absolutely synonymous with the Punisher, changing out his guns for swords, going back and revisiting eras that have already been done by a far better writer than Jason Aaron could ever be, one of the coldest writers 
in all of the Marvel bullpen right now, Jason Aaron, and two artists that absolutely do not fit the character of Punisher. Now, I imagine there are some people that are you know, happy. At least, hey, at least, at least we're getting a Punisher. I imagine there are far, far more Punisher fans that are saying, what is this? I would rather have nothing than this weird, uh, watered down, you know, you know, changed version of the character where you're removing things that are synonymous with the character because, you know, you're potentially scared of it. And then you have a writer. He's worked on Punisher in the past, whether you liked it or not, but he ain't Garth, Garth Ennis, but he's not at his, his creative zenith. And then you have a two, two artists that do not fit the character whatsoever. Now, as far as the editor-in-chief, C.B. Cebulski, he did have something to say, and he would, if you listen to this, it would indicate that perhaps they're not acquiescing in the mob. I don't know that I completely believe that, you know, that there weren't some artistic changes taken to the story based on the negative feedback and publicity that Marvel received over the punishment, Punisher logo being associated with the police. This is what C.B. Cebulski had to say. A few years ago, Jason Aaron came into one of our creative summits with a pitch for Frank that made our collective jaws drop. The story Jason is telling, a truly epic tale about darkness, violence, and choices, can only be told with the Punisher at its core. This series will build on Frank's legacy while introducing us to a side of him we've never seen before, setting the stage for an evolution that we'll uh, find was inevitable. And I believe that evolution is to being a villain. I, I bet you the I just have a feeling that the, a lot of the aesthetic changes that they're making to this were absolutely a direct response. And, you know, it, it would take something for them to change my mind on that. Will this be good? I don't know. I like The Punisher. I think Frank Castle is a very tragic, challenging character to write in, in comic books, just kind of of the, the lengths that he'll go to to accomplish his mission. The mission is just, I don't always agree with, with the means, you know what I'm saying? So it's a complicated character to write. Making these creative choices as far as removing the logo, removing the guns, um, you know, and appearing to make him go villain, I don't think these are going to work out in the long long, uh, in the long term. And I don't think any time Marvel has acquiesced or responded in kind to the mob has ever worked out in their favor. I think it's only done a disservice, not only to their characters, but most importantly to their customers. And this feels like another case of that. So I am very cynical about this news, about the direction of the Punisher. My mind is, is willing to be changed. I do like the character. I will check in on this. Been a while since I've been impressed with the Jason Aaron, uh, with the Jason Aaron series, and I'm absolutely skeptical as hell walking in on this, knowing some of the creative choices that they're, they're going to make and some of the aesthetic choices. So that's the news. It appears Marvel has once again caved into the mob. They're changing the Punisher because you know they, they see the the Punisher logo as being problematic, and you got to get rid of that. We'll likely never even see the Punisher versus Barracuda story now. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. I would appreciate it very much. It helps us attract more views for the channel. Subscribe for future commentary, comic book news, and reviews. And don't forget to ring the bell for notifications. If you want to talk comics, movies, and much, much more, you can follow me on Twitter, at Wes underscore from underscore TC. With that, Salamat Po, and I'm out.